I'm Justin with AmericanMuscle.com, and on this special edition of Mustang News, we're coming to you from Ford's new Advanced Manufacturing Center. We're talking robots, we're talking VR and 3D printing, and yes, even the GT500. We're just outside Dearborn, Michigan at a very new and exciting uh, space here for Ford Motor Company, the Advanced Manufacturing Center with the chief engineer of this center here, Mike McCullough. How you doing, sir? Good to meet you, Justin. Good to meet you as well. Glad to be here. And in a nutshell, if you don't mind, can you tell everybody at home what it is exactly you do here? Really what we do here is we look at emerging technologies and how those emerging technologies can be incorporated into very practical solutions uh, to solve some of the, the challenges that we have in our facilities and, and make vehicles safer, make them more efficiently, and certainly make them more competitively to make sure that Ford Motor Company remains a leader in manufacturing. So we were greeted by a robot out in the lobby, so I have a feeling there's gonna be a little bit of that in this building. Yep, there's, there's a fair amount of all kinds of technology here. Today's uh, tour, we're gonna be introducing you to some of the things that we're doing with 3D printing or additive manufacturing. We'll take you through some of the things that we're doing in both virtual reality and augmented reality and so that you can differentiate the two because they're often confused. And then also we're going to introduce you to some of the things that we're doing with collaborative robots to expand the use of robotics in our assembly processes. And I understand there might be a small tie-in with the new GT500 coming along? Yeah, I think if you're lucky you'll get a little bit of insight. There we go. Well, it sounds like we've got a lot of ground to cover. Mike, what do you say we get after it? Let's go. Let's go. Well guys, Mike just handed us off to Harold Sears, 3D printing technical leader. In a nutshell, if you would, tell us uh, it is what you do here. Yeah, so uh, what you see behind us here is just a lot of 3D printing technology, various materials, various processes, various machines, and uh, we can uh, get right into it and sum it up by uh, saying we make little things like this. What the hell is this, Harold? That is a brake line bracket for the brand new Shelby GT500. No that's, way. Uh, gonna be coming out that you're all gonna get a chance to see. Uh, here very soon. There you go guys, the first piece of the Shelby GT500 coming January 14th, 2019. No big deal, right? We're not waiting for that thing at all. No, this is That's awesome. Right. So this is what you do here. Now, I'd imagine this thing looks pretty simple, but it is not simple, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that is is one of the first couple of production parts that we have ever done uh, here with 3D printing technologies. And even though that looks like a fairly, fairly simple part, that, that was a challenge. That took a lot of people a lot of time and it's really the work behind the scenes to qualify the materials, to qualify the process, make sure it's repeatable, make sure it's robust and that it's a quality piece that we're putting in the vehicle for our customers. So don't drop it because it, it probably took a lot of time to make something like this, right? You probably <laughs> drop it and it'll be okay. I would hope it would live through that. I also saw something else pretty cool as a Raptor owner. I noticed something like this. Uh, where does this go in the U.S. Raptor? I don't see this yeah, in my so, truck. Yeah, so this is a part of the Raptors that are exported to China. We are exporting them to China. They ah. like to play as well. And uh, so this is uh, on the Raptor exports. Um, there's uh, some, some spotlights that aren't allowed to go on those trucks, so it leaves a little hole in the IP and that's a plug for it. Look at that. Uh, it goes in there, printed just like that. Nice Very detail. Cool. Looks good. It's quick. It's easy. That's pretty awesome. Well, Harold, I know you got a lot going on here. Do you mind showing us around some of these yeah, uh, fancy machines? As I mentioned, we got different machines, different materials, and so we'll walk over and we'll take a look at the, some of the specific applications. Tooling around building the new Ranger that we're helping to support, as well as some advanced uh, software that we're starting to use. Cool, I'm excited, let's check it out. Cool. All right, which way are we going, I'm sorry. Well, Harold, we're amongst all the machines here, giant microwaves, whatever you want to call them, but it looks like there's a lot of printing going on here. What exactly is the purpose of this area? Yeah, we call this our advanced 3D printing area. And so, yeah, you're right, we're surrounded by 3D printers, various materials, uh, various technologies. So some of them are, are, are making tooling to help uh, build products in plants. So we have, we have some tools we've been building for the new Ranger to support the production of the new Ranger. We have some other things that work as far as uh, very verifying assemblies. We may build a little environment, see if a person's hand reaches into that area. Okay. We have other machines where we're partnering with outside companies, material suppliers, where we're evaluating their materials. Before the cameras were rolling, we walked in here, there was a door printed right here, or sitting here that looked like it had been printed, but we we're not ready to show that off to the public quite yet. Is that kind of the stuff you do here as well? Yeah, yeah, we were, so we're really involved in prototyping. So there's a lot of prototyping work that goes on. In fact, there's several 3D printing machines back there behind you that, uh, 
that uh, are all responsible for making a lot of the prototypes. And so these are things that are their future products that we're not going to show awesome. you. Of course. Well, Secret tape with me. And check this out. This is a material we've been evaluating and we're starting to use now in production. Go ahead and try to break that thing, man. Look at that. Are you kidding me? It's like uh, it's like rubber, yeah, essentially, yeah, it feels absolutely, like. Absolutely, absolutely. And this so is very, all 3D printed. All 3D printed, very durable materials, man. Things that we're starting to use in tooling to help build vehicles, looking at applications like we talked about with the uh, the Ranger or the Raptor and, and the Mustang. Maybe, you know, some of these materials end up in future vehicles. I know a lot of Mustang guys would like this as their chin yeah. spoiler material so they don't bend it up on those curbs, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, anything other than just composites or yeah, rubber, things like that? Yeah, matter of fact, we are direct printing metal parts right now, too. I'd love to show you that oh, if I'd you love to see it. Absolutely, let's right, do it. Cool. Can I keep this? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
help us set that gap and then check it to make sure it's not too big or too small. That is really cool. Well, again, your uh, your products at work here, I guess, right, sir? That's right. Harold, That's it was right. a pleasure, man. Yeah, thank you man, for showing us you. around. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And uh, yeah, we've we'll seen some of the stuff on the new Ranger. Very good. We just wrapped up with Harold over in the 3D printing stuff. That was a lot of fun, but now we're in something I'm really excited about, virtual reality. And to walk us through the process is Marty Smets here. He's a technical expert in advanced manufacturing in a Mustang fan, an AM fan, if we Big do time. say. See, yeah. look at that. Great to have you here, You guys Justin. are making yeah. us feel good today. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate How are you doing? Appreciate you coming. Well, well, thank you. Well, talk to us a little bit more about this advanced manufacturing and namely how virtual reality applies to all that. So what we're going to show you today is how we set up our future assembly facilities virtually. This is a process that we used to do and we still do at launch. So when we actually build the real workstation and we run the first three cars down the line in the plants for the first time, before we do that, we'd walk through each workstation and make sure we've got everything in place. So this is something, we have typical layouts like this that okay. are really helpful for a top-down view of where bins place. So it's helpful from a real estate perspective. Right, like an old school blueprint almost, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Nowadays, we have full 3D models of our facilities, including the overhead steel, all the columns and I-beams, we have 3D models of our future vehicles and all of the tooling and bins and racks that come together to make a workstation. So we can mash all those together and using new technologies that have really been advanced through entertainment and gaming, we can immerse directly into the assembly plants of the future and we can collaborate with engineers globally around the, the, the optimization of that workstation setup. Wow, that's so pretty awesome. Man. Great, so we're gonna put you on the floor of one of our future assembly plants and we're gonna walk you through an assembly workstation where we put in the main body harness for our Explorer. That is very cool and that's what we're looking at in this big screen behind us? That's right, this is the, an image of the assembly facility we will be immersing into. Well, let's suit up, man, I'm ready to go in. Let's do it, Justin. All right, let's All right. do it. All right, so I guess we're going in, huh? We're going in, Justin. All right. Okay, so this is a HTC Vive virtual reality headset. Okay. So you're going to put this on your face. Oh, man. I'll swing this down and tighten it up. Okay, so I'm going to put down your earmuffs because we're going to be communicating to each other through the device. This is insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no zombies going to pop out at me, either. No. We, okay, we, good. Okay, so here's your controllers. Okay. And so what the rest of us are seeing on a screen in front of you is sort of a producer perspective of this virtual world. So it's sort of a window into this virtual assembly plant, and they can see the avatar representations of you and me walking around that workstation. Wow. All yeah, right? you're right now, you're standing on the assembly line, buddy. You might want to get off that. Yeah, so I'm going to go join you in this <laughs> virtual world, okay? All right, Marty, sounds good. Guys, this is nuts. What you see is, this is where we put in the main body harness, okay? Oh, so wow. What you'll be looking at is this wiring harness bundle that sort of overlays the, the floor plan here, the floor pan here. In this workstation, the operators will take that bundle, they'll flop it onto the floor pan. Um, I have a library that I can load on my controller, and I can bring in new models into this world. So I've just brought in, you can look to your right, you should see I've just brought in this bin. Yeah. So I can put this bin on the floor, and I can bring in a part that's gonna go into that bin, it's a power distribution box, and I can move it into this, this rack. And now we can start to, uh, you know, determine is this an appropriate place to present this part to the operator. So huh. since, we're, since we're in virtual reality, Justin, you can actually walk right up to the front of the bin and you tell me if that's a comfortable position to be in to go and grab this part. So uh, you can sort of, it's sort of far, so, sort of low potentially. It's probably not conducive to the lower back. That's right. And you know, you're a fairly tall person and we may have shorter people in our operator population that we need to, uh, you know, account for. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to oh, bring in a... who's this lady? <laughs> who's this Sorry. lady, right? <laughs> so, so this is Jill, and Jill represents uh, the shortest of our operator population. So when we're trying to design... Vertically challenged, I prefer. <laughs> so Jill, she represents uh, a height that 90% of our operators are taller than. So we always plan for Jill, and if Jill can reach that part, we know that the rest of the operators should also be able to reach that part. Wow, this is pretty pretty in depth. I mean, it's it's pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. What we can do here is, you see, there's another part we put in a flow rack. Sorry, I'm I'm behind Jill over here. Sorry, out of the way, oh, Jill. Good. Hey, Jill. <laughs> Jill doesn't mind. I'll get her out of the way for you. <laughs> no, that's all right. And I'm gonna proceed with the installation here. So, I can bring this part over the fender, and I can practice getting it right into place. Look at that. So why don't you try that, Justin? You won't be able to pick it up, but you will be able to confirm that based on your stature, that part should probably not propose a prop, pose a problem to our operators. Yeah, it sounds about right. I mean, if I could headbutt it into place right now, I would. 
<laughs> okay, Justin, we've got our, our wire bundle all unraveled and clipped into place. We can even bring in power tools and make sure that we've got the right power tools allocated to this workstation to make those secures. Oh, that's awesome, Marty. This, is, this has been quite an experience, sir. You get to have a good time here at work, it looks like, and, but at the same time, you're doing a, a good deed for Ford and helping make uh, better cars, safer cars, and uh, all together, just a better built Ford. Okay, so you've experienced some virtual reality. So next, we're gonna take you through to some augmented reality, which we, we can use to train operators through okay. virtual work construction. Let's do it. Thanks, Marty. It? I guess, man, yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Well, Marty, if you could, man, can you explain to the people at home the differences in a nutshell between virtual reality, what we just did, and sure. augmented reality, which we're about to do? Absolutely. So in virtual reality, we presented an entirely virtual world to you. So the workstation, the environment, the plant, all virtual information. Augmented reality, you'll probably find a little more comfortable. It's a clear lens and it just overlays your real world with virtual content. Okay. So what we're gonna show you today is a work instruction scenario and how we use augmented reality for work instructions. Okay, so training operators how to do different types of work. So in front of you, you here, you see three parts. This is a, it's a parking assembly. Okay. okay. And there's also a written work instruction. And this would be a typical, classic, traditional way of how to teach someone how to do new work. So in a moment here, we'll show you how AR can help augment that process by actually displaying virtual 3D models of these parts floating in front of you with text bubbles popping up, guiding you through specifics of how to install it. Oh, wow, that's okay? awesome. So you're taking the, the guesswork out of the job, essentially, Absolutely. Right? So I'm going to bet that you're going to have no struggles with this. So we'll sit you down and okay. we'll put a HoloLens on you and we'll see how well you do. Don't give me too much credit, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, oh, so worrying it like this, okay. And slide spring over cylinder and hook over edge of lever assembly. So, let's see here. Kind of like that, or do I have it backwards? Uh, oh, there you go. Like, there it is. That's okay. it, Justin. That's the one. All right, <laughs> nice, you completed the work task. All right, well, I see what you're saying, though. I mean, reading it, and you know, learning by reading and learning by doing, two totally different things, obviously, and this is kind of combining both aspects in a way. Absolutely, because this tells you what to do, but it doesn't show you how to do it. Right. So another operator would have to use their tribal knowledge to teach you those steps. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is that if we give you an experience like that, you can teach yourself those steps and you can collaborate with others globally and experience that lesson together. You can do this like a classroom type setting, I guess. Right? Absolutely, it's yeah. very flexible. This is awesome, man. You guys get to have all the fun here, huh? <laughs> well, we have a lot of fun, but it also really helps increase the fitness of our manufacturing process. So really appreciate you coming down to AMC and letting us share some of the stuff with you. Marty, it's been a pleasure, man. And hey, hey. thanks for, uh, for watching, brother. Pleasure for me it. too, I'm a big fan. So keep up the great work at American Muscle. Will do. Well guys, it's been a fun day so far. We've done 3D printing, we've done virtual reality, now we're talking robots. And to do so, we got Harry Kikajian, digital factory manager here with Ford. Sir, how you doing today? I'll do left-handed again for you. you. Doing Thanks. well. Thanks, no Thank worries. Uh, so again, we're talking robots here, but if you wouldn't mind, tell everybody at home what exactly your role is here with the company. So my role here is I look after the industrial control systems, looking at all new technologies related to them and what we call our digital factory. Now, Harry, robots in automotive production aren't a new technology, right? I mean, Not they've been around all. forever, but you're taking things in a, in a new step or a new way forward. Uh, how so exactly? So uh, as of a few years ago, I think most people have seen robots operate in our factories. Uh, what's different here is they are what we call power and force limited. So the point of that is that these collaborative robots are, are meant to operate in collaboration with the operators we have in our facilities. And that's good to hear, right? Because I think a lot of people hear more robots in automotive manufacturing, they think less jobs for humans, but that's not the case here. The goal of these collaborative robots is to make the job easier for that human operator, correct? Yeah, and when you look at the applications that we're, um, we're targeting with these collaborative robots, it's all about being more efficient, more productive, and producing a higher quality part for our customers. That's what we're all about. Well, here we got some cool robots, it looks like, in the background here. What do we say we uh, take a tour of them and show us what they're doing? All right, so uh, in this case here, this is an application where combine a collaborative robot in conjunction with some machine vision technology. Machine vision essentially is we're taking pictures and analyzing those pictures with some machine learning algorithms that look to inspect the quality of, in this case, an engine, to pre-screen any, any quality concerns that then uh, our, our operators could, could intervene and make the correction. That's pretty insane. Now, how far can you take this technology? Can you actually have a robot like that almost determine if a bolt's been torqued, or is that are we not quite there so yet? We have other quality control means of doing that. We are now also starting to integrate 
a collaborative robot with a fastening tool at the end of it, so it is actually fastening uh, the bolts down. We do that normally with traditional robots, okay. but by being able to do that with collaborative robots, we're able to, again, uh, increase our efficiencies by reducing the machine footprint that we would have on our factory floor. Nice. Well, it looks like we got a couple more to check out downhill here. Area. This one's making all kinds of noise and, and pictures and lights. So in this application here, um, we are again combining a couple of technologies and doing something a little different. This is a material handling application where we're picking up bolts out of, that are randomly oriented in a bin. We're simulating the bins in this case and placing them in no an old location. Now can I just say, this might be the best invention in this building. Why? As someone that's worked in a shop, organizing the bolt bin is the <laughs> worst job in the world. Yeah. So if you can find a robot to grab all the bolts out of there, organize them, I think every shop in America would probably buy one yeah, of those. Yeah, and what we're targeting here is have a very simple application where we're only combining two, uh, two different technologies together, the 3D scan and uh, the generation of the coordinates for the, the collaborative robot. To, to minimize the number of steps it takes to, to take that part and place it into a normal gotcha. location. Well, last but not least, the big green machine okay, over so here. This is a new series of collaborative robot offered by Fanic that we're starting to test out. This is a 35 kilogram payload. Payload is how much, how much load you could put on the end of the arm. So having limited reach and limited payload limits the applications uh, we were able to deploy to date. Now uh, with this new series of collaborative robot, we're looking at a whole new set of applications that we weren't looking at before. And I think it's gonna be very, very successful. I'd say so, right? Saving these poor guys and gals backs on the assembly line, lifting things up and putting them down. And I think that sums up what you guys do here at this particular plant or this uh, the center. I mean, emerging technology, we see it throughout the 3D printing, the, the virtual reality, and now with the robotics. You guys are on the uh, the forefront of uh, emerging automotive tech. So thank you. Thank appreciate you, you taking the time with us, man. Too. Thank you. Very cool. Well, guys, that is going to wrap us up here today at Ford's Advanced Manufacturing Center. We want to thank everybody for giving us a peek behind the curtain. And I will say it's really exciting to see where the future of automotive production is leading us. But thanks, Justin from AmericanMuscle.com for visiting us today. My pleasure. How about that? Guys, remember, for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.